Right, we're back and it's part five. Uh, so stay with me. We're talking about angle today. So if possible, try to situate targets at a level with the shooter. So if you're setting up your own firing range, try and find the most level piece of ground that you can. However, many times this will not be possible or a choice in the field. So obviously in the game, you know, you aren't really going to flank around a long way just to make it a level shot. You're just going to take the shot from where you are most of the time. So be aware that shooting downhill will give an ability to shoot further. So obviously as the pellet flies to where it normally would, and then the ground's lower down, so it gets to travel a bit further. So ranges are increased. Um, however, a good laser rangefinder will show you that angle and also work out the actual horizontal distance, which will be shorter. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm shooting from here, from here to here, that's, that's the distance, but really it's only this far horizontally, which is a shorter distance. Um, so use the bow mode on your laser rangefinder and for downhill shooting, use that more as your guide. Uh, need to use this aim point for the shortened distance rather than the line of sight range. So this is for shooting downhill as a guide. Pop-up seems to add a slight amount more lift when shooting downhill. Be aware shots seem to want to level out slightly dependent on hop setting. You mean, may need to aim low in extreme downhill shots. So basically, um, you, you hop, if you're shooting downhill, it'll, it, instead of trying to keep your pellet level, it'll maybe start to create a bit of a climb, or at least at some part of its um, trajectory, it'll do that. So you've got to study these things, learn these things, but I expect that at, say, mid-range, you might have to aim a little bit lower than what you think. Um, while shooting uphill will reduce range, uh, for obvious reasons in reverse, take the range as being the actual line of sight distance, not the horizontal distance, so don't use the bow mode for shooting uphill, is my advice. However, expect, you know, this is for what, like guides in the field, when you go, what, what range is it, that tight, it's downhill, or it's actually this distance. Whereas oh, it's uphill, so I'm going to take it as being the longer of the two settings on the on the rangefinder, and that'll help you as a guide to actually make a, um, a good estimation of your um, point of aim. Okay. Uh, however, expect to add some extra holdover for uphill shots. Your hop setting will dictate the amount required to produce a hit so this is the thing is i can't tell you a definite answer on any of this it's all down to what way ammo you're using what power you're using how much hop you're using now we can quantify the first two but the hop setting well you can see how many clicks it is on an unmodified system but everyone's using all different systems anyway so it's not like we've got a, a metric that we can go off about hop and that's why all this is about learning all these things and never adjusting your hop just learning how it shoots in different conditions use the same ammo all the way through and and just learning to aim differently for you know taking into account the wind the, the angle the distance uh, the conditions etc right so we'll just briefly look at that again so i brought this little weather station out again this time, look, it's reading 760, that's actually moved that, it was about there yesterday, it's a tiny bit lower again, 766.5 millimetres of mercury for the pressure, which is uh, moving again ever so slightly to a more favourable position, it is on to this zero degrees so it, it's more dense air definitely than yesterday it's very cold and there's uh, 70 
six percent humidity so you know it's reaching that stage where it's it's not good for you, for your air soft gun when there's a lot of humidity in the air it, it makes the air thinner but you get to a stage where it's, it starts condensing in your barrel and your hop rubber i don't know if that affects it moisture on it forming you know but who's to say so it's it's approaching that point where once you're going into like the really high, high humidities, I'd suggest it's starting to cause more problems and being beneficial. And that's the least of the factors when it comes to the density of the air anyway. So overall, I'd say it's a worse day. And there's a little bit more wind. I don't know if you can see, there's all sorts moving around out there. It's maybe double the wind there was yesterday. So I'm gonna speculate around eight miles an hour. I can't see loads of the grass moving in the field. And I can't see the treetops moving over there either, even the little twigs. It's all quite static but I can definitely feel on my face and everything's moving. It's cold wind as well. Uh, so my correction for the wind would be probably about double what I said yesterday. So one and a half to one and three quarter mil dots maybe. Um, out to that tree at 145 yards. Um, depending, you can feel it's, it's increasing again now. There's, there's lulls in the wind and you, you're moving your crosshairs depending on what you feel the wind doing until you decide that's the time to shoot um, so that's that and then we'll finish on this moving target here is some data on moving targets use it by multiplying the speed with the estimated flight time of the pellet adjust it by what angle the target is crossing for example a man crossing at 45 degrees so running at an angle would require only half of the lead of a man running fully to the side this will give you a rough amount of lead to give the target and it also modified by any windage from the breeze so again this is just an another adjustment to your, to your uh, point of aim left to right and basically it says average speed of moving target slow patrol 0 0.8 mile an hour is one feet per second so if there's a man down there and he's crossing yeah and i think it's a four second flight time down there i need to be adding an extra four feet on so a, a yard and a, a third or you know a meter an extra meter onto whatever windage i was already putting on so I might be approaching more like two mil dots now. Uh, a fast patrol is 1.3 miles an hour, which is two feet per second. A slow walk is two and a half mile an hour, which is four feet per second. And a fast walk is 3.7 miles an hour, which is five, six feet per second. My eyes. <laughs> and finally running, 7.4 mile an hour, 12 feet per second so a man running down there uh, a 90 degree angle to me uh, would add I'd have to aim 48 feet to the side of him so 30 feet 10 yards so you're talking like another 16 yards in front of him so you know you've heard the, the uh, expression Hail Mary's well there you go that's what them kind of shots are and, and bizarrely people make them we've all made them um, it's a certain degree of instinct and a certain degree of luck uh, so an example 0 0.3 gram at 2.3 joules travels 190 feet after one second so that's an interesting little statistic there 280 feet after two seconds so a shot at 240 feet is approximately 1.5 seconds. So a man running at 90 degrees to the shooter, one and a half seconds away, 240 feet, requires 18 feet of lead. So yeah, there's a lot of maths in there, but there's theory and maths and like it all makes sense and just gives you, you don't have to learn all these things. You just have to be aware of them and just think, yeah, I need to aim further out. <laughs> You know considerably further out in some cases and it's learning what those instances are or things like like we discussed today angles and movement of, of the actual target obviously i don't recommend shooting at people at 145 yards when they're running 
really you want to be waiting till they're static that, that's the time to shoot you need like that long four second window from the moment of them being stood stationary to also being stationary when when the pellet arrives four seconds after you pull that trigger so timing if this is in a game shot you know that's key don't just be shooting at the, the people milling around unless they're in a group yeah, you're very unlikely to for them to even notice if you because you'll miss and they probably won't notice the miss because it'll be so low powered it'll just be a nothing and it's not like it'll be a series of hits or, or you know it'll be like 10 seconds between rounds often coming in um, so it's more when the stationary that's when people are going to realize my god a pellet just landed near me and that's the other effect of ELR shooting in gaming is the fact that you might not hit that often very memorable when you do hit um, but it's more about the effect it'll have on the game which is people over there and suddenly feel under threat even though you know it's the degree of luck in hitting people you can get good at it if they're going to let you take repetitive shots and then they react um, often people react and they kind of show it the look at where the pellet landed which gives you a good indication oh, i need to aim a bit further and a bit further to the left so it's getting whatever feedback you can in game and waiting for those little windows of opportunity where you've weighed everything up you're ready for the shot you don't rush it you wait for that opportunity um, and, and you never know you'll, you'll be surprised uh, moving on well We'll look at that tomorrow, but uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you in part six.